afternoon and welcome to Workforce Wednesday webinars, a professional development series that helps diverse job seekers develop new skill sets that will enhance their careers and influence their personal and professional lives. And now our host, James McFarland. Good afternoon. My name is James McFarland. I'd like to welcome you to the Urban League of Lexington's Workforce Wednesday. Workforce Wednesday is brought to you by our sponsors, Toyota Two Shoe and Truist Bank. We'd like to thank them both for sponsoring our show. Before we get to today's program, I'd like to invite all of you all who are viewing this to go to the Urban League of Lexington's social media pages to see what we have going on here at the league. Today's guests are from one of our sponsors, Truist Bank. We have uh, Benjamin Little, he's a VP with Truist, and we also have Sean Blades, who's also a VP and marketing leader with Truist Bank here in Lexington. Uh, I'd like to welcome them both to the program. How you doing, Sean? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And there's Ben. How you doing, Ben? I'd like to welcome you to the Good afternoon, Lexington. man. Thanks for having us today. Uh, no problem. They're going to be talking to us today about separating uh, your business and personal finances. And with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Sean to let her uh, start and continue the presentation. Well, very good. Good afternoon and welcome to today. Separating business and personal finances for small businesses. Um, Truist is a purpose driven company and our purpose is to inspire and build better lives and communities. Small businesses are the background of our communities, and we're committed to helping business owners succeed at every level. Through products and services we offer and through advice and expertise we offer about partnering with our community, with like the Urban League. So we're excited to conduct this session and provide the tools that we have to help your business be successful. I am working, Sean, on getting this presentation to share, okay. but it's giving me a little difficulty, so hang tight. Okay, Ben's going to share with us, but while we wait for him to pull the screen up, uh, we'll talk a little bit about today's agenda. And so we are so glad that you're here as we explore as separating your business from your personal. And we'll go through six sections, starting with why it's important to separate personal from business funds. We'll help you define goals and what you have for your business and your personal needs and revisit how you're gonna pay yourself through your business. We'll examine how to best structure your business and organize your finances. And we'll examine, uh, we'll wrap up with some resources regarding financial accounts and tools. Are you good? Good, there you go. All right, I was gonna say it should be up. There you go, perfect, yep. thank you so much. So we'll start off some introductions. If you're joining us live, if you want to share your name and your business information in our chat box, that would be fantastic. Um, and I think we have someone monitoring our chat for us. And as well as share any questions or goals you have for today's session. Good afternoon. I see Marlo in the chat. And Marlo, do we have any participants in the chat? No? Okay. Um, so what is your vision of success? What do you want most out of your business for yourself, your family, your community? There are some questions that we can use to ask for. Um, oh, sorry, skipped ahead a little bit. <laughs> so bear with me one second. I was geared up for a live audience. So why separate personal and business finances? Separating accounts allows you to understand your business performance, your cash flow, and your profitability. This makes you a more informed owner. Better financial organization protects you from possible lawsuits and helps you have documentation, documentation around your business debts. Clear records help build credibility with banks and investors. And you may reduce the risk of tax mistakes. This creates a paper trail in the event of an audit and it can allow your accountant to identify other ways to help you identify deductible expenses on your taxes. And finally, it gives you a peace of mind knowing that you as an owner are on top of your business. So let's talk about your business and personal goals and where you want to go. We talked about the vision for your business. Now let's talk about, oh, I think I skipped a screen. I apologize. 
So let me okay. ask you this Sorry question. That. No, that's okay. Let me ask you this question. Yeah, when, when, how many, do you see a lot of clients coming in who have their business and their personal finances co-mingled or, you know, is absolutely it happens. It happens a lot, especially when you have folks who think they're going to start a side business and they're like, Oh, this is a little, and it's not going to go anywhere. Then all of a sudden it turns into a real business. So it's not your side hustle. Now it's a business and you're making money. So now you've got people using their personal credit cards and their personal debit cards. And so you're creating a real mess when it comes tax time and you start needing to report that income and, and look for your deduction opportunities. Okay. I'm, I'm going um, I'm to listen to the presentation because I, I found a lot of times I have <laughs> questions that are answered later on in the presentation. So, <laughs> so I'm going to listen for a little while, but you may see me jump in from time to time with the question and I apologize. No, please. There. Yeah, I Please, we, we love if, it. if I'm asking something that you are covering later in the in the uh, presentation. Oh no, anytime you jump right in, James. Anytime. Okay. Um. So, and, and let's talk about how to set and refresh business goals. So, um, many business owners are driven by the desire to be your own boss. Do you like making your decisions, or do you like having a team to work with? Um. Do you have employees, or do you plan to have employees? Do you want to employ your friends and family or folks in your community? Do you want to be hands-on or do you want to be an investor who wants to contribute capital that leads operations to someone else? These are all questions that you're going to want to consider when you're looking at how you want to set your business up as an entity. And secondly, what are your personal, personal goals? Is your business to be your primary income or is this going to supplement another job or income stream? Or is this something that you're going to invest in to look for a future payout? Is this something that you're going to need a consistent paycheck from for, business, for living expenses? Or do you have financial reserves to cover you as you get started? These are all questions you're going to answer before you get your ball rolling. Or if you're already rolling, this is a perfect time to pause and, and get the answers to these questions. The next thing we're going to look at is your personal time commitment. Is there limits on how much time that you have based on another job or family commitments? Um, are there functions or activities where you'll need outside help? And do you wanna accomplish a goal centered around a mission or social impact or a particular cause or community? These are all things that need to be part of your business plan. And your growth goals. Is this something that you want to limit the size of your business? And this is going to be your business. This is your baby. You're going to take care of it. Um, or do you want to have multiple locations and maybe eventually franchise? Is this a business that you want to attract investors and continue to scale the business to a larger size? So when you're looking at all those things, and Ben's going to share with us later some of the different ways that you can set up your business um, you're going to ask these questions of yourself. What are your goals for your business structure and its impact? What are your personal income goals? How have you envisioned your personal commitment to the business? And what growth goals have you set? So those are things as you fill out this worksheet, and you can refer back to this. Um, and if you have any questions, of course, you can put them in the chat. Our contact information will be available. So if there's anything we can help you with going forward um, as you create this plan, Please know that we're always available and happy to help. Let me ask you this question, Sean. Sure. Um, in the um, in the screen that you just showed, that looks like it comes from a, from a workbook. Is that yeah. workbook available for the uh, for the viewers to download or something at a particular location? Absolutely, they should. Um, Marlo, is there? Where can we share that it's workbook? It is attached to the meeting invite from today, and I can send it to you if you'd like to upload it or um, provide it uh, through your website or registration process. So um, it, Great. Yeah. it is in the meeting invite, and I can resend it to you. Um, um, that's okay. If you, I'll, I'll, I'll view the invite to make sure that it's there, and then I'll upload it so that our viewers will get a chance to download the uh, workbook so they can answer these questions. And it is a perfect tool to have a tangible. Um, I, I am very big on writing down my goals and aspirations and being able to refer back to that in a hard copy for me is tremendous. So that's why we make these tools available. Um, and, and so now we've talked about the business income. How are you going to pay yourself? Uh, paying yourself, of course, is important to separate your business and, and personal finances. And it helps you think clearly about the money for your needs and the money you're putting in to cover business expenses. 
how you pay yourself can shift as your business grows and evolves as your personal situation changes. So a couple of the ways that people pay themselves is by paying themselves a regular salary. So with this commitment, you're paying yourself weekly, monthly, bi-weekly, whatever you set that up as. Um, and the advantages are you can reserve taxes and have predictability on your personal income. Uh, but the trade-off is that you may be causing a shortfall in the business. So if there are months that maybe your cash flow is cyclical and those funds aren't readily available, is there going to be a shortfall there? That's why some folks opt to have an owner's draw where you pay yourself funds as they become available. The con here is it's a little less predictable, but allows you to manage the business cash flow needs. So this is really a very personal decision based on how, what your personal needs are. Um, there's also other ways that your, your business can provide compensation and distribution of profits. So you pay yourself a salary and then a bonus. Uh, if you have extra profits. So maybe you take a smaller salary and then if the profits are where you need them to be, you pay yourself a bonus. Uh, retirement plans uh, offer another method and that can be tax advantage. You wanna talk to your accountant, um, but business owners can use the proceeds to fund their own retirement planning. Owners will sometimes buy business real estate and lease it back to themselves. This is something that I personally, I'm seeing more and I'm not sure it been if you are, but if folks are buying that real estate so they're getting those advantages and then they're leasing it back to themselves. So it's an expense and you're building that asset. So now you, you own that property and you're paying yourself rent. <laughs> uh, so it works out pretty well, actually. Um, and some people employ family members to keep the proceeds of the, of the business in the family. When you're looking at that, really working with a good accountant is a great way to make sure that you understand the rules with the IRS regulations and tax implications of, of any of these payment options. So there is a sheet available for you here in the workbook for you to write down um, what your requirements are and when and how you'll pay yourself. And again, that, that is fluid. So that could change. You can start out just taking incomes when there's profits to be distributed. And then maybe you move to a permanent salary and or bonus options. So as we move forward, I'm gonna share with Ben Little and he's gonna share with us how the business structure and organization matters. Let me, let me, uh, yeah, so before, hey Ben, before you get started, let me ask you this question. Would it be wise for the, for the, um, potential client to come in and download the workbook, answer these questions before they come in and see you all or come in and see a lender in case they need a loan? It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt to do that. So you've kind of got some free work, but we are absolutely always willing to sit down and have that conversation. Um, I will use an example. I had, I had a gentleman in last Friday um, and he didn't know where to start and he didn't even know how to get his tax ID number. So we sat down, shared the website with him he was able to get on the um, irs.gov, get his tax ID number. We showed him how to register with the state. So these are things that people think that they have to do beforehand, but it's something we can help you do. And, and your bank should be able to help you do that, but we are always available to help you do that. Um, we can't do it for you, but we can give you the instructions on how to do it for yourself. And um, yes, there, Marlo answered the question in the chat. So that is the perfect answer, yes. Absolutely. So as we move on, um, let's talk about the true mechanics of your business and getting that set up. The first thing you're going to need to decide is your business structure. And this is a legal structure for your business that has a pretty large impact on your business and personal liability, your funding option, and your taxes. So just like your compensation, your structure may need to change as your business grows and develops. So this is something that, that you know, may change as you progress through your business. The chart that you're looking at on your screen gives a pretty good summary of kind of the big structures that are out there, but it's always best to consult with a tax advisor or a legal professional before you make this decision. So um, a couple questions, you know, to consider of what structure are you using today? And then why did you choose that one? And that's going to be a question you can ask yourself periodically. It's not just a one answer um, thing. It might be something that, like I mentioned earlier, you're going to have to adjust as your business grows and moves along. Um, some of the, the other tasks that's gonna go along with your business structure is your compliance, which is a huge, huge thing you wanna make sure you're on top of. Your state, 
local, locality, your industry, and your business model is going to affect the types of permits, licensing, and filings that you're going to need. Other areas that you're going to have to address include labor law filings, sales taxes, professional licenses, environmental and OSHA compliance, industry-specific regulatory filings, business licenses, employee immigration verification, and more. And don't forget insurance for your employees, like disability insurance and worker compensation, as well as health insurance, if that's something that you want to provide. It definitely can be a lot to handle. Uh, you can assemble this information for yourself or use a business advisor or consultant for support to walk you through some of those things if you're not familiar. Um, but you also want to consider how you're going to protect your business, making sure you have the right levels of business insurance. Our insurance company, Truist McGriff Insurance, uh, will be happy to partner with you to recommend different ways that you can look at protecting. Um, excuse me, I almost choked there for a second. Um, We'll be happy to set you guys up with a conversation with our insurance group if that's something that you're interested in. If you guys are doing the startup, this is definitely something that you want to take into consideration before you even jump into it. Um, you're going to have to select your name. Before you can register your company, you're going to have to have that name in place. You're going to want to make sure that that name is available for you on the Secretary of State. You're going to have to set up that business identification. So you're going to have to register for your tax identification number, your employer identification number with the IRS. So you have your federal taxes taken care of for your place. You're going to need to check and make sure that your state is registered as well with your local entity with the Secretary of State here in Kentucky. You're going to have to register that business domain. Listen, everything's online today, right? So you're going to need that internet address if you want to have your business online. So you're going to have to look at setting up that website which is a hugely important first step in building awareness and getting your business name out there. So you want to make sure that that website's going to be available and you're not going to have to find a registered domain to take care of that for you as well. And then if we've got just a second to do some questions and answers here. Um, one of the questions is what's the best way to determine what kind and amount of salary your business can handle for yourself? And of course, Marlo answered for us that it, that it really depends. If your business generates a consistent profit stream, then a salary is a good option. However, when you first start a business, you may be building your client base and business income may not be consistent. Usually an owner draw is used in this case. And we talked about that just a, just a minute ago. The amount is really dependent on your cost structure. So you'll wanna keep sufficient cash on hand to purchase inventory, make payroll, pay bills and cover accounts receivables while building some cash reserves. Once your operating cycle is covered by some consistent income, then you can determine um, if what the owner's salary or draw could be. An accountant could really help you with that. Yeah, and that goes right into kind of the, the next section of this is just thinking about the cash investment it's gonna take you to start your business. Um, while not exhaustive, you need to consider some of these categories of expenses, like those business fees and licenses that we just spoke about, that income that you're talking about. What about your location, your setup? You're going to need those things. If you're pulling in advisors, you're going to have to pay for those professional advisors or consultants who are going to help you get your business off the ground. If you need to bring in contractors or additional staff to help you get running, those are going to be some added expenses, as well as your supplies or inventory that you're going to need to have in place. And again, as your business grows, protecting your trademark, protecting your product, filing those trademark licenses may be some expenses that you're going to have to take on down the road, especially if it's something from an entrepreneur standpoint where you've created something or a different service. So there are a lot of additional expenses that can kind of surprise some business owners from time to time if they don't take a little bit of consideration on the front end. You don't want to find yourself with the business that's really rolling and then be surprised by one of these things that has slipped through the cracks. Let me ask you this question, uh, Ben, and it's like, I'm yes, sure the numbers vary, but let's say a person is starting to do business and they go and they apply for a business loan. How much, uh, how much cushion should they give themselves when they're asking for their loan to, su to support that business? You know, what if, if they've obtained what all their costs are, their initial startup costs, should they borrow at least that and, a, and enough to carry them over for a, a year or six months or? You know, what's your always recommendation when, when, when that is uh, for that type of question? 
Yeah, so again, every everything is going to kind of be different. It's all going to depend on the type of business, the investment. From, from a banking standpoint, we also want to see um, how much is the client putting in. Um, are, are they are they willing to put it on the line just as much as the bank is willing to put it on the line to be able to see what we can do? Now, there's a ton of different options. Um, and like I said, it's going to vary for everybody. Um, it might be, hey, we just need some, some cash flow stuff where we might direct you to a Visa product that might be a little bit more um, beneficial to what it would be than giving you $25,000 up front that you immediately start making a payment on. Um, so for every business, it, it's going to vary. It's going to have to be kind of a one-off situation where we have that deep conversation about what makes the most sense, what's the true need of the fund, like what's that immediate cost that you're going to need to kind of get up and going, and then we'll determine what's going to be the best option from there to, to help support that from a credit standpoint. Okay, but that but those are questions they're able to ask when they come in and visit someone like absolutely. you or yourself and you absolutely with them. Okay, great. Yeah, absolutely. We we love sitting across the desk from someone and having that conversation, um, and partnering with them to kind of get it off the ground and make sure it keeps going. So that is absolutely a conversation we would love to have and uh, share our expertise with. Yep. Great. So if you're looking on your screen now, you're going to see a slide about some finances. Uh, and again, this is important. Since your financial system is going to track the money flowing in and out of your business, you're going to need to think about some of your core activities. So these are your operating, your everyday operating. You're going to go through the guidebook. And again, we, we talked about the guidebook a lot. It's really important to have through this. But some questions that you're going to make, you're know, going to want to answer and make some notes on, um, start with accepting payments. How are your clients going to pay you? How are your customers going to generate that money for you? Are, is, are they the primarily business? Are, are your customers primarily businesses or are they consumers? Do you need to send out sales invoices or are these going to be things that they're buying in a store location? Is there a lag time between when you pay your customers and when you ultimately receive payment? So think of a lawn care service. You may mow the lawn this week but not send out a sales invoice to two weeks later. So now, you know, you're, you're 10 days um, waiting to get paid for a job while you have other employees that you need to pay. How are you going to accept those payments? You want to think about, am I going to accept debit cards and credit cards? Or am I going to be cash and checks? Are they going to pay me in person? Are they going to be able to pay me over the phone? Are they going to send me some online payments? Or am I going to use Zelle or PayPal or Venmo, some of those electronic payment options? And then you got to think about money going out. How are you going to pay your vendors, your suppliers, your contractors, those people that you work with? Are you going to use your debit card or your credit card? Or are you going to pay with cash or check? Are you going to pay people in person or are you going to be making payments over the phone using the online system or that Zelle? So money going in, money going out is going to be a big thing there. When you talk about your suppliers, what payment terms do they offer? Just like it might be a couple of weeks out before you get paid for a job, maybe, maybe your suppliers will offer you the same pricing where you have a 15 to 30 day window where you are paying back the supplies that they've offered you. Or do you have to pay up front to get those things? What about your employees? How are you going to manage your payroll? Sorry, my screen just glitched. Um, yeah. That's okay. Ben, while you're fixing your screen, I, I will just interject here. When, when you're looking at accepting payments, um, what we commonly see, and, and I, I feel like Ben would confirm this, our folks automatically are like, oh, I'm going to take Square. I would encourage you to look at your other options. Um, what we see is there's a delay in getting those funds credited to your actual account. Um, they hold those funds for a period of time. So if you are just getting started, that cash flow is important. Um, working with, with your bank, um, like Truist, when you use our services, it's available the next day. So those are things you really need to think about is what's that delay time? Because if you're on a 15 or 30 day pay, like Ben said, you may need that cash quicker than it's becoming available. And then there's a service issue where you can't get a real person and you really want to have a banker. You want to have someone you can talk to. Yeah, that's important. Um, so back at my apologies for that. I've got a couple screens up and I'm clicking from one to one to keep this presentation going. So sometimes my fingers get in the way. Um, back to your, your employees. Are you going to do your payroll in-house? or are you gonna outsource that to a payroll company and let them provide all those services? How often are you gonna pay them? That's a big cost there. 
um, whether you're doing that bi-weekly or weekly or bi-monthly. So that's something to take into consideration. And then how are you going to pay your contractors? Same way. Are you going to pay those per job? Are you going to pay them up front? Are you going to pay them um, as you're making your other employees pay? Some other things you want to think about is your accounting and your reporting. Looking at these financial reports that kind of help you make sure your business is on track. A profit and loss statement is exactly what it is. It tells you how much money you're bringing in, how much your expenses are going out, and it's going to give you that kind of net at the end of the day. Okay, was I in the profit? Was I in the green? Or was I in the red that I have a loss? Your balance sheet, that's going to track your assets, your liabilities, and ultimately your net worth. So these are the, the assets that I have in the business. This can be your real estate. This can be inventory. This can be supplies. This can be informational assets that you have. The liability, that's going to be the things you owe. So, you know, you had to pay for that inventory. You had to pay for that service up front. And then the net worth is going to be the difference there. And always, you know, you want your net worth to be positive. You want those assets to outweigh those liabilities. A statement of cash flow, and this is going to be um, something that's interested to your investors and lenders. This is just seeing how's your cash moving in and out. Is your cash flow sufficient to meet the needs of the expenses that you have? And then a collections report. This is especially important if you are um, sending invoices out. What's your collection rate? Are you tracking those payments? Are you getting those in in a, in a timely manner? Do you have any unpaid invoices that are out there that need your attention? You know, you want to get paid for the work that you've done. Um, so if you're not already kind of tracking some of these um, expenses and revenue, like that's something we really want you to encourage to do. It gives you a great insight for your business. Um, you can always use an accounting software that can do this, or an accountant is going to be um, someone who can help you with these reports as well. So with this, we're going to talk about some tools that can help organize your business and your finances and who can help. Um, you want to have a separate business account set up for the money coming in and the money going out of your business. So let's talk about what kind of accounts make the most sense for your needs. You're going to want to um, kind of hire an accountant that's going to set up the business book that's going to help you as you grow. Accountants are going to help by selecting the software package that makes the most sense for you and aligns with the structure of your business that you chose earlier that's going to help with your business process. There's also going to be some advisors in helping you file and pay your taxes correctly on time. That's hugely important. You don't want to get on Uncle Sam's bad side there. Um, many accounting software packages can connect you directly with your business bank accounts. So that way that information is flowing. So that can include your bank accounts, your business credit cards, any type of e-commerce or online transactions, payroll systems that's going to be able to save you some time and reduce some errors. Again, you want to make sure that you keep this clean and keep Uncle Sam happy with that. QuickBooks is a very common one. There's also Xero out there, FreshBooks, Zuhu, that you can consider when you're thinking about your software packages. Some other things to talk about, who needs mobile access to be able to see what's happening with your reports? Do you need to have multiple users? Does your accounting system connect with your bank? We just mentioned that. It's going to be easier for you to manage these processes if that information is flowing directly from your bank into the accounting system so you kind of have one place that you can go and get all these reports, keep track of your balances. How are you going to handle your bookkeeping to classify all of your income and expenses? Uh, this is going to be really important from a tax deduction standpoint. You're going to pay yourself to do this or a bookkeeper, either as an employee or you're outsourcing it. Uh, but this is going to be something that's going to be important to you to understand, hey, where's the income going and then where are the expenses going? And then if there's some of those that can be tax deductible or beneficial for you to be able to separate those out. And then there's also going to be some data that you're getting from your financial system where you're going to get a clear view of the business. It's important to track the performance of your business. You want to make sure you're making money and you're making it the right, in the right ways. Your bookkeeping, bookkeeping service or your accounting staff software is going to be able to generate some customized financial reports for you on a regular basis. It's going to help you understand what you what you are doing with your business. Again, accountants and bookkeepers, yeah, they're an expense, but they are worth it. With these advisors supporting you, you're going to be able to enjoy some peace of mind and save many hours of administration each month to be able to focus on the things that you do and that's your business and making sure it's growing properly. So when you talk about um, some financials and accounts and the tools out there, and we've talked about the business finances, let's, let's look a little bit deeper into the actual tools. These electronic tools, they can help automate your record keeping and more quickly 
uh, get the money in from your customers. So let's talk about what they are, which, um, and you'll kind of see these on the, the um, on your screen, your basic financial transactions, that's going to take place into in, out of a checking account, right? If you're building those cash reserves, having that savings account to keep some of that money separate, whether that's a money market or just a regular business savings, to separate that out from your everyday operating expenses, I think Sean will agree with me on this as well. That's a huge component to manage your risk. Uh, we see so much fraud out there that takes place. And uh, a lot of people, you don't really take into consideration what all the information you're providing when you send a check out. It's got your name, your address, your routing number, your account number. Um, so if you're keeping a large balance in that checking account, that exposes the risk, you know, that increases your exposure from a risk standpoint of what could happen if there was fraud in that situation. Now, you know, there's zero liability and things that you're going to be protected, but that doesn't stop the headache. So that's why it's really important to separate out some savings again, whether that's in a savings account or a money market account from that kind of everyday business operating expense account that you're using. When you're talking about payments from your customers, again, going back to debit and credit card processing, who's managing that? Sean mentioned Square um, as an option. It has its benefits, but there's also some, some things that, that can create some heartburn. So it's a really important decision to make. Um, if you're setting that up where you can accept these cards on the web, um, how that's going to operate. And then Zelle, which is a, a kind of a new to the financial game, but allows people to send money directly um, from their cell phone with as simple as a, a cell phone number and email address. When you're talking about payments by a credit card, are you going to use a business credit card? Are you going to use that card at all? Or are you just going to pay everything with, with your operating expenses? Again, from a fraud protection standpoint, the business credit card is always an option. Um, that way, if there was something to be hacked, they're not taking your money, they're taking Visa's money that they're letting you borrow to make those expenses. So that's always a smart decision that we, we kind of direct people to use. Let me ask you this when question. Talking, if I, I'm sorry, yeah, to but let me, since you got on the business credit card, it brings me to a question. I worked with, um, I'm working with a business and a guy is using his personal credit card to help run his business. And that's why he was interested in this topic, separating your business and personal finances because again he's using his personal credit card to help him sustain his business while he's trying to get a foot so you would recommend him to get a business credit card and if so how difficult is it to get a business credit card so business credit card absolutely i would recommend um any time to be able to separate that from personal is the smart thing that you want to do from from truest standpoint, a business credit card follows pretty much the same guidelines as a personal credit card does. We're going to look at the personal's uh, the person's actual credit score and their finances, just like we would any other credit decision, and we would ask them to be the guarantor for the business. So yes, this is this is your business. You're the person behind the business. So let's look at getting a business credit card in the business name with you as the personal guarantor behind that. And at that point, that's when we would consider their personal financial position. So their credit score, their cash flow, their finances, and make sure that we can get them approved that way. So that would be one of the first steps that that person should do is apply for the business credit card and start putting things on that credit card versus his own personal credit card. Absolutely. And there's some great benefits there right now. Our business credit cards are 0% for nine months. So especially if you're starting up a business or cutting yourself out, having some free money for nine months to be able to uh, not have that interest expense early on as you're starting to build your, your revenue and your client base coming in can be a huge advantage. There's also some cash back rewards that you can take advantage of too. So as you're traveling to build a business, there's some 3% cash back on gas, which is a great one right now. Gas is crazy expensive. So anytime you can lessen that blow a little bit. Um, is, is helpful. So there's some major advantages to being able to put those expenses in the business's name, get those rewards, take advantage of that 0% for the first couple months. And at the end of the year, you're going to get a business statement that your CPA is going to love because you're going to be able to provide that, hey, here's, here's the transactions that took place on that business card. And that's going to make it a little bit easier for them to look through that transaction list to see what may um, fall into some type of tax deduction category as well. Um, then there was a question in the chat about, is there any free software um, out there to help people manage their um, businesses? And I, I, Marlo actually answered for us, but I don't think there's anything that is actually free out there. Um, but Quick, QuickBooks is very affordable. And um, for us, like with our Truist accounts, it imports the information directly into your account. So, so that is compatible 
Um, it, I, I don't think the initial product is terribly expensive, but there are upgrades and it can do a lot of functions. Um, so if that price tears up as you look at, as you want to utilize more of those options. Absolutely. So let's um, we talk a little bit more about uh, some of your direct payments that may be coming from your checking. Online bill pay, guys, is one that I would highly recommend as well. Uh, this is going to be um, especially a, a time and cost saving um, because you can build in your suppliers, the people who you're paying. And this can include your power bill, um, you know, your water bill if you have a location that you can build those in, have that saved in the online banking system. So when that bill comes, you can click on the system very quickly and easily, get that bill paid and sent out. Um, if it's a location that accepts checks only, the bank will do that on your behalf. So you're not having to, to continually buying checks and keeping up checks and writing checks out. It's just a very easy cost saving standpoint. Again, the Zelle is, uh, again, new to the game, but a game changer when it comes to being able to move money from party to party quickly and easily. And of course, you do have the business debit card, the credit card goes in and checks as well from that direct checking account. When you talk about paying yourself and your employees, that payroll software, um, again, I think is important. It's an added expense, yes, but the protection it can provide you and the time it can save you, especially as you're starting your business and growing your business, it's going to be worth the cost on the front end. The peace of mind is huge there because you're not going to have to worry about missed tax payments, incorrect tax filings, uh, somebody not getting paid on time, you know, from an employee standpoint. So, uh, that is something we would definitely recommend. And then just being able to monitor and control your finances by looking at your online banking and mobile banking, taking advantage of all the information you have out there at your fingertips, staying on top of it so you truly know what's happening in your business every single day. So as we talk about next steps um, and kind of summarize the material that we went over, um, Let's take a, you know, an easy action list to kind of take away with you. So here's, here's what we want you to do. Um, start off, determine how much you're going to need to start up your business or start your growth process. Um, that's going to be important. You're going to need to know that commitment up front before you decide to jump in. Decide how you're going to pay yourself, right? You're doing this to make money, right? You're doing this to generate, and you want that to be beneficial to you. So decide how much you're going to pay yourself. Select that business structure. After you consider all your legal and tax implications of all the options, use the guidebook. It's going to help you formally state your goals and your goals, your business and personal financial goals, and help you decide what's going to be that best business structure. Once you make that decision, you're going to want to decide on how you're going to set up your accounting. What type of structure are you going to put in place to track your income and expenses? Decide on your accounting software as well as who's going to help you with your bookkeeping financial reporting, and tax preparation. Then you're going to talk about the tools and the services that's going to best meet your needs. So these are some of the things we spoke about on the last slide. And lastly, connect with other business owners. This is a great resource. You want to learn from their experiences and access some of those resources that they've already experienced that they can share with you. So establish that group of advisors, professionals, or other business owners in the areas where you need some expertise whether that's accounting, law, banking, insurance, whatever it is, but create that inner circle of, of, um, of partners that you can rely on when you have questions as you're going through this business process. All of these steps, if you take them, it's going to put you in the best position for your business from a structure standpoint that's going to lead to your success. So let me encourage you, use the guidebook. I know James is going to make that available if he hasn't already. Take some time to jot down the responses um, to those questions at all the sections. Make sure you're going through that. It's a great way to reinforce kind of what we've talked about today so you can apply them to your business. So um, I guess at this point, we'll open it up and see if there are any other questions, if there's any key, key takeaways that Sean and I may be able to answer for you. Do we have anything in the chat box, Sean? We do. Um I think Marla has added some resources. You know, QuickBooks does offer uh, payroll through their program, but it may be worth it to hire um, a company. There are several um, options available around town. Um, and take advantage of free resources. The Small Business Development Center, I've worked with them quite a bit, and um, that's a great resource. The Women Business Centers, 
um, nonprofit small business development service providers. I've worked with community ventures. So there are, especially in Lexington, we have so many resources. The Commerce Lexington, they offer some free events. So if you're not sold on, if you need to join the chamber, there are free events that you can also attend to kind of get, get a, a, a bearings on whether that's something that would work for you. Um, they offer free resource, free utilization of their social media platforms. Um, so that's something to consider anytime you can get uh, free exposure is awesome. Hmm. Well, well, I'll, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for that presentation. <laughs> I'm sure that that's, um, those who are going to be viewing it will find this information helpful, and especially if they download the workbook and go through it and complete it before they come in and see anybody to ask any questions as how they should further proceed. So that's great information. And again, we'll make that here at the Urban League available for you all uh, through our websites and through the chat when you view this video. So you'll be able to get that information. And again, if a person has completed that workbook, and they want to come in to view, I mean, to talk to someone at Truist or any other bank, what do, I mean, who do they come see? Who who do they come see at the bank? Well, not, not a particular person, but what office do they come see? So, so for us, us say, any of our, say again, yeah, any of our offices here in Lexington will be happy to help. You know, we, we really want to help business owners in their journey um, to provide that right kind of advice and solutions. I hope we've kind of demonstrated that today. Um, Sean and I, as well as Mike, who is at our location on Vine Street, and Heather, who's at our location in Hamburg. I'm on Tate Creek, and Sean's out in the Beaumont Center. Um, we're happy to take any questions and uh, sit across the desk from anybody who may be interested in just diving a little bit deeper. We care about their success. We want to help them achieve those goals. So um, they can contact any of us at any of our locations here in Lexington, and we'll be happy to help. Great, great. And you can you can schedule an appointment online. You can come into the branch, and usually, if I'm not available or Ben's not, someone else is available. Um, we well, I mean, we are all uh, any way they want to come in. If they want to call on the phone and be like, "Hey, when can I see someone?" Okay, just great. call us up, and we'll make it happen. Well, great, that's good to hear. Well, again, I like to thank you all for the presentation. Um, on separating your business and personal finances for our viewing audience. And if there is no other questions, again, I'd like to thank you. And I look forward to speaking to you all again at a later date, maybe on some other topic, and we'll continue the conversation. All right, James, thanks again. Very good. Having. No problem. Thank and and Sean and Ben's uh, contact information is down below. Well, at least Sean's is down below in the chat, so you all can see that yeah. because of you all who need to contact them. All right, well, with that, pop is in there. Yeah. And if not, they can always contact us here at the Urban League and we can point them in you all's direction. That That's not a problem. Yep. But that said, we're going to end. Anytime. Okay. Well, we're going to end today's Workforce Wednesday. And I'd like to thank Truist Bank again for having you all present and for also being a sponsor of our Workforce Wednesday. And for hey, thank you so much. Uh, no problem. And join us in... Uh, Join us for our next Workforce Wednesday, which will be held on the 20th of October. I mean, excuse me, September. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.